So the plan here is to build the screens that you saw in the course introduction episode. This activity here is going to host both the sign up and the sign in fragments. It's called the entry activity. And we're going to be switching between those two within the same activity. Here we're creating a Firebase user whenever we click on join. And we can go off to the sign in screen through this button. Now over here in the sign in screen, we can go back to the sign up screen as we would expect. And here's where we're going to log in with that same Firebase user we just created. We're also going to enable Google and Facebook login both through Firebase here. All right. So to get started, we're going to create a project, new project. We're going to call it fire login, save it normally. Nothing special here. We get the main activity. I usually like to switch to the project view here so we can get a better look of what's inside. Here we can see the main activity, nothing out of the ordinary, very common. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to head over to the apps build.gradle file and we're going to add the dependencies for Firebase off using the bill of materials. This is a new update to Firebase libraries that helps you keep all your Firebase uh, libraries in one version. So you just specify it once as you see done here with the BOM and you don't have to keep track of all of them. Next we're going to add the dependencies for RxJava and Coin. We're going to use both those libraries in this implementation. So let's sync this and we see that we got an error. It's about the Coin version variable it doesn't exist. It's very easy. We can head over to the projects build.gradle and we add it just like there's a Kotlin version variable used down below. We have a coin version 2.0.1 sync again. All good. Now we just run the project and just see if everything's okay. All right, it runs. Everything is fine. We can now move on to the next episode where we're going to set up the coin dependencies. Okay, so now it's time to set up the coin dependencies. To do that, we're going to create a file, just call it coin modules, because it's going to include modules through a function called module, very appropriately. It's going to return a module, and then we're going to use that to init the dependency graph for coin later inside the application class. The first one is going to be a dependency for shared preferences because we're going to use that later on. Next, we're going to have two dependencies. These are for satisfying the schedulers that we're going to use when we say subscribe on and observe on. Usually we subscribe on the schedulers.io scheduler and we observe on the main thread. So we're going to supply these two as dependencies and we're going to have them in the syntax as uh, provide UI scheduler, provide IO scheduler. So we're not going to have to type all of this Android schedulers dot main thread each time we're going to use it. We're just going to say UI scheduler. To do that, we're going to provide a qualifier to the single function from coin. This functionality is available. Now you're going to be able to call it as the qualifier. You don't have to uh, just get the same type in the dependency where you need it so it would match up with this. You just call the qualifier. Then we'll use the dependency for Firebase auth so we don't have to type Firebase auth.get instance every time we need to use it. Now let's define these two qualifiers. Just create a file called qualifiers. It's very simple. It's just going to be two objects, IO scheduler, UI scheduler. They're both of the type qualifier so that we could feed them to the single function as a parameter of the same type. And that's it. Next, we're going to create the application class for our app so that we can init the coin dependencies graph inside. usual on create and the call to the function init coin we're 
which we're going to define and inside we're just going to say start coin given the Android context meaning the Android context we defined to use for the shared preferences is going to be referring to this application class and then we're going to define the modules to include the first one which is application go over to the manifest add this application class as the name of our app and that's about it for coin modules now we're going to try and run and we see that it runs fine not everything okay no errors now we can go ahead to the next lesson the base view model is where we're going to implement the command bus solution so let's create that first our base view model is a view model itself of course now the way we'll be handling the commands in the command bus is by creating a command subject which we'll push our commands to a published subject is just a subject that emits items to currently subscribed observers so we'll later observe the subject in our base activity we'll also create this commands variable to store a version of the published subject that can only be observed it cannot have on next called on it it hides its information so that no one from the outside no one from outside of this file would be able to call on next on this subject all the on next calls will come from this file only which we'll see now we'll be pushing commands to this subject using the emit command method it takes a vm command we'll define the vm command class soon and we just push that command to the command subject using on next now for the vm commands VM command is just an interface and we'll define a bunch of commands that we'll be using throughout the application like close screen, open main screen, open entry screen, you can have a show toast, you can open settings screen, you can show dialog, whatever you'd like to do really, you define it as a command. Now for commands that are just used as identifiers for our intentions like closing, opening, with no extra information needing to be passed we can just define them as objects however for commands like show toast you also want to send the contents of the toast you want to show so you can do that by defining it inside the variable message for example now in the next episode let's hook up the other side of the solution in the base activity where we'll observe the changes coming from this subject the base activity makes up the second half of the command bus solution. So far we've set up the published subject in our base view model and we're pushing commands to it. Now it's time to observe that command subject for any new commands and we process them accordingly. The base activity will be abstract so that it can provide a common template for other classes to extend and use like the several other activities which we'll be creating soon. It will support any base view model using this VM generic and it will itself be an app compat activity. Now we need a reference to each activity's view model so we'll create that. Using the base activity's view model which itself is a base view model we will now be able to access that command subject we just created in the previous episode. That command subject is available to every view model now. We're also going to need a disposable object to assign the result of subscribing to the command subject. Each subscription is going to produce a disposable and we'll need to keep track or keep a reference to it so that we can dispose of it when needed. Here in our onCreate, we'll observe the command subject from the activities view model. We'll observe it on the main thread. And in the subscription block, we're going to delegate the command we just got to a method we'll call handle VM command. It's important to remember to dispose of all the disposables when the activity is destroyed. So we'll do that in the onDestroy method. 
Now for the handle vm command method. It takes a command as an argument and filters for typical commands that we'd like to handle for all activities. Like the show toast will show a toast with the given message, which you can grab right from the vm command object. And we have the close screen command, which is also applicable for all activities. Here we will just call the finish method to finish whatever activity this command was sent to. Now the reason this function is open is because other activities will want to also have their own versions of this function where they can handle other commands that are specific to those activities, not just these global ones. And finally, we'll just return true to indicate that these cases were handled.